If you had a wish list, your top thing that you want to see in government, what would it be? And then please tell everybody about the things to look for this year. Well, so I, I will um, talk about two areas that right now are at, very active in the, leg, in the coming legislative session that are, would be on my wish list. Um, I'm going to go first to the ed, area of education um, because it relates to something James said, that government rarely tracks how well government is performing. And in the education area, uh, over the last decade, really more than a decade, increasingly Georgia has been moving towards a system where it's very hard to tell how well our education system is performing. If you go back several gov governors to Governor Barnes and Governor Purdue, Governor Barnes and Governor Purdue didn't agree on a lot of things, but they did agree that tracking how well our schools performed was a very important measure for the state. And that was particularly because our school systems don't over, an, when you look at them on a national level, they don't perform very well. And so both governors really implemented testing programs that um, rigorously tested how the schools were performing. Uh, over time, there has been greater and greater pushback against that testing. Um, and the governor, our, our incoming governor, just announced that he would be uh, increasing teacher salaries by $3,000 uh, per teacher. And side by side with that was also the message that they will be returning more opportunity to the local schools to decide what kind of testing takes place. There is an understandable pushback against the standardized testing, but the worry is that as we move away from standardized testing, uh, it is increasingly difficult to tell how the school systems are performing and less and less information is shared with parents and the public about how schools are per performing systematically. That's been the result of, uh, on a federal level, uh, the federal government has moved more and more away from insisting on, on standardized testing if you're going to get federal dollars. Uh, and then in combination at the state level, because of those federal law changes, the state government uh, and the legislature has increasingly been given more opportunity to local school systems to decide how they're testing schools. Milestone tests were very, um, uh, were created a lot of public backlash, and so there's more and more opportunity now for schools to move away from the milestone tests. But the risk is, over time, our schools will be kept less accountable. That we'll be spending more and more money on them, and yet the public will know less about how well they're really educating our students. So that's an area that we're watching, and that is is an, is a concern. Another area that is a big concern, uh, and will be act very active, I think, this legislative session, is the hospital industry. Um, there's a lot of controversy over uh, the origin of hospitals and whether they are really accountable to the public at this point. In Georgia, a lot of the major hospital systems, not all of them, but a lot of them, began and in some sense continue to be public hospitals. A good example is Northside Hospital on the north side of Georgia. Uh, it started because it was created by the Fulton County Hospital Authority. Um, so public taxpayers uh, were the ones who funded the building and that was taken over by Northside. And, um, and as a result, public money really started that hospital. Uh, and as a result, Northside is accountable to the public. Northside strongly resisted being accountable to the public um, and refused to comply with Open Records Act requests that were submitted to it. That case ultimately went to the Georgia Supreme Court uh, in 2017, and the Georgia Supreme Court issued a decision saying, no, you are performing a public service for the public. You are carrying out a public function so at some level, you are responsible under the Open Records Act to provide information to the public about how you perform. And that includes, for example, a compensation of your chief executive. The chief executive is paid more than $3 million a year. Uh, that is significantly more than other chief executives in, in the same industry. That issue, uh, unfortunately, though, 
Northside, uh, the, the issue got remanded to the trial court. The trial court's trying to decide whether certain exceptions to the Open Records Act applies, apply. And hospitals, are a lot of hospitals that uh, have origins in public money, are watching that case closely. So how does this relate to the General Assembly? The General Assembly is now considering legislation that uh, will potentially um, clarify this process and make sure that hospitals that were started with public don dollars uh, are making basic information about how they perform public. Um, the compensation of their executives, the amount of charitable work that they do uh, that require the, uh, the hospitals themselves and their subsidiaries comply with Open Records Act requests. Those would all be very valuable steps to make sure the hospital system is accountable to the public, um, and hopefully those will uh, manifest them that, themselves this year in legislation that gets passed in the General Assembly.